amends with people, trying to talk to them about times that maybe you weren't that fucking nice to them. And I think now, more than ever, in 2023, this song makes sense. Because we used to try to connect with one another. We used to get on each other's MySpace pages and see who was in the top eight. about shit that doesn't matter. So let's get back to the good shit. Music. Love. Happiness. We are all about to work together. So, if you need to make amends because you were passive aggressive in your fucking text chain, this song's for you, all right? You don't even have to say it. You just send this link over and it says everything you need. We love you guys. It's for you. Sense. We're way far back. 
How many of you guys first heard of Hawthorne Heights because you got a sampler CD? You got a ticket that Sunday CD. And we were track number one. That little fucking moment right there changed our lives. Because it immediately put you guys and us together for the first time. If you gave anybody now a free CD, they would literally drop it on the ground. But you guys, you took it, and that's how you discovered music, and that's a beautiful fucking thing. All that is is a testament to your generation, and how you found all these bands, and how you stuck with us. All because of one shiny fucking disc. I just think it's beautiful. So, the song that was on that disc is the song we're gonna play right now. It's actually the most important song in our career because it was the first time that anybody outside of our town in Ohio said, you know what? And because of that, we got to make our first album called The Silence in Black and White. We flash forward just a tiny bit later, and this song is on a little disc from one of our favorite bands, Taking Back Sunday. And it's such a magical moment within this fucking weirdo ecosphere called emo. And we'll never forget it. So do us a favor, if you know the words to this song, this is actually what we consider our monumental song that changed our lives personally. Okay? Because if you guys didn't react to it way back then, we'd be back working at the fucking gas station like we were back here before. So thank you guys so much. This song's for you. From the bottom of our hearts, you changed our lives. You still change our lives every fucking day.
It's fucking hot. because we just play fucking emo music and it's one of the most beautiful relationships in the world. So, it's a situation where we know all of our friends and family as well. We like hang out together. And uh, so he knows me and my wife, Nikki FM, very, very well. So, I was trying to write her for the first time in my life a happy fucking song. <laughs> I think you guys know how this usually goes. It usually goes to the depths of hell pretty quickly, somehow, up here, somewhere. So I was talking to Anthony about it, and I was like, hey man, would you like to sing on a bridge? Yes! You can write the part. Yes! Here is what I'm trying to say. And he's like, I would absolutely love to. He sends it back to me. I'm over the moon excited about it. It's so fucking beautiful. It's everything that I could not tell my wife who I've been with for 22 years. And because he had the perspective of our relationship from, from his little part of the world, he, could, he said what I could never say. So we're going to play the song for you guys right now because it's really special to us. I wish he could be here because he's a fucking boss and a great singer. But these guys are pretty good too. So they're going to take over Anthony's part tonight. Really, this song is about trying to chase down everlasting love because it fucking exists. But you got to work at it. All right? You got to turn off the internet every once in a while. You got to look each other in the eyes and just talk. Do you guys do that anymore? Don't be on a text chain with the people that you love. Look them in the eye. Take them to a, a coffee shop and just talk. Because that's what this song is about. It's about anybody who's trying to chase down their dreams with the person they're standing next to. And you need to be the biggest fucking supporter of that person and the biggest champion of all their goals and to help reach their goals, all right? That's how you're going to find eternal happiness. All right, this song goes out to you. Thank you so much.
there's happiness in there somewhere. Just like all of our lives, it always kind of comes out wrong sometimes. But anyway, that song's called Spray Paint It Black. I hope you like it. This is usually the part in the set when a band plays like a slow, sad song that they like, they crank it up and play you like a happy song that is like, you know, really uplifting and it's going to take you to a better place. But the Hawthorne Heights way, is we're gonna dig you down to the depths of hell in the next song and take you to the worst fucking spot in your life. Because that's what this is all about. It's about how we've all made it out, all right? How for the past 20 years, we thought none of us would make it, and we're all fucking right here. It's real. One of the things we wanted to do on this tour is to try to explain these songs a little bit for you guys. After 20 years, because I know you guys have your own interpretations of them, and how you guys connect to them, and how they've helped you through the hardest times of your life. But one of the driving factors are the hardest times of my life. And when I was in sixth grade, my parents got divorced, and it broke my heart at a very fucking early age. When I needed them the most, they were busy destroying each other. How many of you guys have felt that way in your life? How many of you people are children of divorce? Don't lie, because I got the statistics. It's nearly every one of you guys. So this, that's what this song is about. In sixth grade, it was the first time that I put music 
in my headphones and try to play a song that could help me through what I was going through. I remember it so vividly. I was staring in the middle of an empty field in the summer. And I just remember seeing flickering lights in the background. Just a tiny flicker. And I had no idea what it was. My parents got divorced. I moved out. I moved with my mom back into the Midwest. And it was the first time I'd ever seen a firefly. And those fireflies that I see every summer now represent that flicker of hope. Because I knew that if I could just make it to next summer, I would see them again. And that's what hope is. Hope is knowing that you have tomorrow if you want it. And we have to make each other fucking want it. Every single day. And that's why we're here together. Because when times get dark and times get cold, we're gonna have this forever. And these moments, are we're gonna drive us past them. Because the best thing about this is a long time ago, you guys thought you couldn't make it. But this is a fucking tale of redemption because 20 years later, you're here. You have made it. And you can make it through anything. And we'll make it there with you. We love you guys. This song's kind of hard to breathe. Thank you. 
Are you with me? All right. See, Matt? Best show of the tour. This song's for you. Sing it loud. Blow your voice out. Now, don't blow your voice out yet. We got a couple more songs. Just sing it like medium loud. All right. Thanks. Spittlefield getting back together for this fucking The band we played so many shows with, we respect them. They've been our good friends since 2003. We just wanted to have them on this tour. We forced them to do it. They couldn't say no because we were going to pick them up and take them with us anyway. And they're just fucking awesome. We absolutely love them. Give it up for Spittlefield. 
And for the first time, I just found this out today, by the way, because we've, we're, a, we're a band that thrives in chaos. We've been going consistently since from 2003. But Armor for Sleep have not played here since 2008. What if you can hear that is for them to be back on the stage tonight? They've never even been to this place. They remember the fucking White Rabbit was the last place that they played. We've been sharing a bus with those guys for the past, I don't know, three weeks or something. And they're just special guys. They're hilarious in their own way. Really good hearts. They're from fucking New Jersey, which is weird. That's where normally mean people are from. But they're fucking cool guys. So make sure you guys spin their new record. It's awesome. It's called the Rain Museum. It's fucking sick. It's incredible, all right? So we'd like to play one more new song for you guys, okay? But it comes with some strings attached, as they are do. Most of the time when people write new songs, they're reaching for something that they're not. And what we've always tried to do is just be exactly who we are, for better or for worse. So we used to try to write songs to help us through the darkest times in the early 2000s when you guys were kids. And then when you guys were in your 20s, it was smooth sailing, everything was fucking sick. You went to college, you discovered beer, life was easy, life was good. I see a lot of people out there creeping in their 30s. You got the real life shit happening now. You got a spouse, you got a kid, maybe two kids. You're bringing your kids to our shows. You get one opportunity in your life to be the fucking cool parents. And some of you guys are reliving that dream with your kids and it's the most special thing in the world. Alright? Because if you don't, you're gonna have to start paying like 800 bucks for Bieber tickets. Keep them in the $30 range and you guys are straight, alright? So, the emo is always an affordable play. Alright. So, we wrote a new song for you guys. It's about being emo in your 30s. Well, you gotta pay bills. You gotta go to a job that maybe you don't like. But you do it for your friends and your family. And you work every fucking day just to get a couple of hours to yourself. I got news for you. You're never taking a nap again. Those days are gone. No more naps. It's over. You hit 30, not a single nap, it's over. So we wrote a song about understanding what it's like to bust your ass for probably a job that you don't really care for. And then you come home, and that's where you gotta find peace. With the people that you live in that house with. And you can't transfer that negative energy from your job into your house. Leave that shit at the door, all right? Leave that shit at the door. Because the people that you love the most are gonna help you through it, but they don't want you to be annoying with it, all right? The most important part of this song is your cell phone that has been introduced since our first album came out. Remember, like I said, you used to just have to worry about what your hair looked like. Maybe if you, you had to buy a $20 flat iron to get it like laying just right. That was the most important thing. Because MySpace was chill and everybody was cool. But now everybody on the internet is fucking attacking you for every single thing in your life. And the way that you stop that is by hitting the mute button on everything that you don't want to see. Because there's no reason to give yourself anxiety or stress when your life is already stressful. So don't listen to total strangers talk bullshit on the internet. Nobody cares about that stuff. We're all here. We all look different. We all act different. We all feel different. And that's what life is. 
So don't let the internet paint you into this little tiny fucking box. Alright? Because San Antonio, you're one of the most colorful people on the fucking planet. Are right here. We all look different. We all feel different. Hit the mute button on losers. Alright? And follow oh, people no. that you love and you enjoy. But most enjoy the fucking ride. Alright? When you hit the mute button, all those people turn to dust. They're gone. You'll never see them again. Because they don't care about you. They're just trying to rile you up. But this can rile you up in a positive way. We love you, San Antonio. This song's called Dandelions. How are you guys feeling? If I come down here, will you promise not to be mean? Can you hit me? Alright, I'm coming in here. Best show of the tour? We don't say this every night, guys. If you want, deadhead around with us a little bit. Come to seven or eight shows. Can we keep it real? I will not be saying this in some of the cities. We'll see I, will. The <laughs> I will not name names like he will, but 
You guys are truly one of our favorite places. There's just fucking something about it. Maybe it's because we all shared the white rabbit experience with that people. The hottest place in the world is the white rabbit in 2004 in August. It's not getting a hell of a that always bring us here are the same people that will bring us here forever. Because they care about you guys, they care about your music scene, and they just want to show you guys a good time. So thank you so much to Vibes and Max. Because it makes a fucking difference. Are you guys ready? Yeah. I know it's Saturday, by the way. So a lot of you guys have to turn off. But either way, I know a lot of you guys, most of you guys, are not professional singers. So you can afford to blow it the fuck out tonight, right? And all the bands, we have ten more shows in a row. No off day till we get home. So we need you guys and your energy so we don't blow it the fuck out. Alright? There's nothing better than the morning after a show that you've sang every word. And your friends and family are looking at you like you're insane. Because you're torched. But it makes you feel cool just for a second because you went to a fucking rock show. And they were probably watching HGTV. San Antonio, this is for you. For tonight, Texas is for lovers. When we're done, I'm gonna go right over to our merch table. If you pick up something, I'll gladly sign it for you. Get a high five on the way out. You guys have made a difference in our lives for 20 years. That's not lost on us. We give a shit. So come over and say hello. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Get home safely. I sincerely hope you can't talk tomorrow. You've listened to everything I've said. Let's fucking go, all right? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Just for thanks for being a dog. Let's fucking go, Santa!
Uh, me and Mark, and you, and... Oh, you got it. 